we're now moving into another area of economics where we look at market structures. So we know the ins and outs of firms, we know that they have costs and revenues, and we know how we can map those on economic diagrams. But in truth, the conduct of firms depends on the types of market structures that they're in. So, when we look at market structure, we define the structure using concentration. Okay? So, we're going to start off by looking at one extreme side of the scale when it comes to market structures. We're going to look at perfect competition where there is 0% concentration in the market. So, what characteristics exist in perfect competition? Okay, what are the characteristics of firms? Well, first of all, we assume there to be many buyers and sellers. Okay, so many buyers of a good and sellers of a, good, of a specific good. We assume that the goods sold okay, and the goods bought are homogeneous goods. They're identical goods. That's a fundamental assumption we make. We also assume that there's perfect information for both buyers and for sellers. So if the price changes, straight away the buyers know exactly that the price has changed and they know exactly to change their consumption to somebody else. Similarly, uh, for sellers they have exact, per well they've got perfect information about the costs of specific firms, the technologies of other firms, etc. So there's perfect information around for both buyers and sellers. We also assume for there to be no barriers to entry and no barriers to exit into the market. So any firm that wants to set up Okay, and design, decide that they want to also join the industry, they can do so free of charge, costless entry. And at the same time, if there are any losses being made, if firms want to leave for some reason, then again, it's free to do so, costless to do so. Finally, we assume that firms are profit maximizers, that's their main objective, and we assume consumers to be utility maximizers. They're trying to derive the most satisfaction possible. Okay? Now, as a result of all these characteristics, we can say that firms that operate in perfectly competitive markets are price takers. Okay? Because of all these quite extreme assumptions, firms have got no choice but to take the price determined by the market mechanism. So the forces of demand and supply in a market determine a price. The firm is forced to take that price and charge its product at that price. If it tries to increase the price, or well, there's perfect information, all consumers will leave or stop consuming that product from that firm, they'll consume the product from a different firm. Similarly, if they decide to lower their price below what the market was saying, well, all the other firms would follow, meaning that that firm would sell exactly the same amount as it did previously, but now at a lower price. Point is to do so. So, we can actually map what this looks like, so all these conditions lead to a diagrammatic understanding of how firms in perfect competition operate. So given what we just said about price taker, we have to draw two different diagrams together. Okay? So the firm takes the price and charges at the price determined by the market. So we're going to have one diagram where we look at the market or what's happening in the industry. And then we've got one diagram which shows what's happening to the firm given the price set by the market. Okay? So if we start off by drawing a very basic demand and supply diagram because that's all that's going on in the market we've got quantity price okay so we know equilibrium price occurs where demand equals supply so that gives us price P1 and quantity sold at Q1 okay the very basic stuff going on in the market where demand and supply forces are interacting together now as a result Let's call that price and costs, and let's call that quantity again. So, we just said that firms are price takers. All right. So, here are the prices, or well, here is the price at the moment in the market determined by demand and supply. Now, as a result of that price, the firm must charge that price. Okay. So we know that firms in perfectly competitive markets have got Perfectly elastic average revenue curves, perfectly elastic demand curve. If you don't understand that, look at a previous video I've done on revenue curves and you'll understand why. Alright, so we know that the demand curve is the average revenue curve, it's also the price. So there's the price. Now, if that's the price, if that line there tells us the price, it's also telling us the demand curve, the average revenue curve. Okay? So let's plot that point across. So, exact price. That's also the price the firm is charging okay, 
um, itself. So it's taking the price from the market and charging that price itself. Okay? So we know that this curve is the average revenue curve. It's also the marginal revenue curve. Okay? We worked that out in the previous video as well. And at the same time, it is the demand curve. Okay? So bear all that in mind. Now, these firms have all got basic cost curves, so the cost curves that we know and understand, okay, these are still uh, as normal. Right, I'm going to make an assumption here that in the short run this is happening. Okay, so let's just draw some cost curves on here. Let's draw average cost that looks like that and marginal cost that looks like that. Okay, so let's draw average cost, marginal cost. So, these firms are taking the price level at P1, but we know that the profit maximizes, and profit maximizes firms that do that will produce where MC is equal to MR. Okay, well we know we've got our MC curve which looks just like that, our MR curve is just horizontal line going across. Okay, so where does MC equal MR? Well MC equals MR over there. Okay, so let's kind of go down to our quantity level. Well that's the quantity produced when a perfectly competitive firm is profit maximizing. Now we can also work out in this diagram that there's a difference between the average revenue, the horizontal line, and the average cost, which is down here. That vertical distance okay, tells us that there's profits being made. Average revenue is greater than average cost at quantity level Q1. So, if we kind of go and plot over here, we can shade in an area of profit being made. So in green, you can see that that entire area are super normal profits being made by a perfectly competitive firm. That's got nothing to do with the firm. The firm is just taking the price set in the market. And that happens to be at a level where super normal profits are being made. Let's assume that's going on. Now, there are conditions in perfect competition where there are no barriers to entry and there are homogenous goods. Therefore, firms, okay, firms or producers, okay, that are currently not in the market are thinking, well, actually, I can produce that good, that's fine. Okay? I want a slice of these profits. These firms are doing so well, I want a piece of the pie. So these producers decide, well, I can enter the market, it's free for me to do so, it's easy for me to do so. Well, I may as well do that. So that's what these firms decide to do. They decide to enter the market as a result of these super long profits. It's the incentive function of the price mechanism, the role that profit plays. Okay, acts as an incentive to come in. Okay, it signals a new entry into the market. So as new firms enter, the supply curve in the market will shift to the right. Okay, basic determinant of supply shifts, basically. When more firms enter, we shift the curve to the right. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, to S2, which leads to a new equilibrium price and quantity, which is down here. Let's call that Q... I'm going to call that Q2 instead of Q1. Let's call that Q3. And let's call that P2. So the price has fallen as a result of the supply shifting to the right. Okay, the quantity in the market has increased. Now, at this new price, P2, the firms are forced to take the price. Okay? That's the price that they're going to charge at. And as a result, that new price is also the, the average revenue. Let's now call that AR2, MR2, and demand 2. Okay? So that's the new price being charged, which they're taking. Now at that price level, P2, you can see okay, that the firm will produce where MC is equal to MR, Profit maximizing, which occurs down there. And that leads to output level Q4 being produced in the firm. Okay? The key thing to take away from that is that at that point there, where the firm is going to produce, average cost equals average revenue. We're at a point of normal profits. Okay? So as a result, in the short term, super normal profits cannot be made in perfect competition because of the fact that there are no barriers to entry uh, and no barriers to exit. No rights to entry means that firms are just willing to enter because they see uh, super normal profits being made there. Okay, fine. What about if the opposite happens? Okay, so let's rub this all out. What if losses are being made in the short run? Okay, what then happens? Okay, well maybe you can work that out because basically it's just the opposite scenario. So again, let's start with our market here yeah, with demand and supply. So D1 and S1. Equilibrium price at P1 and a quantity Q1. Okay, so that's still quantity. And we've still got price up here. Okay, now we know 
firms are price takers, so they're just going to take this price and work with it. So that's the price that they charge. So again, we're going to have price and cost up here. And we're going to have quantity down here. Okay, so we know that that's the price they charge. And that price is also the average revenue, it's also the marginal revenue, and it's also the demand curve. Okay, we know that, that's a given. Let's go the opposite way now. Let's assume a loss is being made, right? So I'm going to draw these cost curves, exactly the same cost curves, okay? And marginal revenue as well, cutting the average, uh, sorry, marginal cost curve, cutting the average cost curve at its lowest point. Right, we know all of that, fine. So again, uh, a profit maximizing firm will produce where MC is equal to MR. Well, where does that occur? Well, there's MC and there's MR here, so it occurs at this point. Okay. Okay, so at this point there, that's what they're producing now. You can see, if you look at AC and AR, your average cost at that point, let's call that quantity value Q2, average cost at Q2 is higher than average revenue at Q2. All right, that vertical distance tells us the difference between average cost and average revenue. So now, costs are greater than revenues, the firm is making a loss. All right, and I'm going to show that using red. So the red area here, Okay. Costs are greater than revenues. Right. So what's going to happen now? What's going to happen now in the market? Well, think about it. Again, these subnormal profits, economic losses, act as a signal okay, that firms should leave the industry. Okay. Get out of the market. You're making a loss. It's not efficient to continue production. So firms do leave the market. Okay. So less firms in the market, less firms in the industry, supply will shift to the left. Okay, what does that look like? That looks like that. So supply shift to the left, there's a new equilibrium formed, okay, and Q3 and P2. Okay, so the price has gone up now because supply shifted to the left. We understand that. Okay, so these firms are price takers, they take the new increase in price. All right, and that increase in price takes them back to normal profit. So how do we know that? Well, we're drawing our line across here. So let's kind of draw a line across. Okay. So if we see here, that's our AR2, which is also our MR2 and our demand curve. So at MC equals MR now, it occurs over here. Okay. Or at Q4. So that's the new point of production okay. as a result of the price increase. Profit maximizing firm. And you can see now we're back at normal profit levels. There's our AR curve, this, this dotted line across here, and it touches our AC right at the bottom, and that's what we're producing. So only normal profits are being made, AR equals AC. And that is long-run stable equilibrium because the subnormal profits, the losses, okay, provide a signal for firms to get out, basically. And it's costless to exit, so they do make exit, which then raises the price, takes uh, firms back to making normal profits. Okay? So finally, what does long run equilibrium look like? Let's understand that a bit better. So there are two scenarios of short run super normal profits okay, and short run losses being made. So what then happens in the long run? How can we define long run equilibrium okay, in perfect competition? Well, we can do it by drawing this diagram. So again, we've got our market diagram here, price and quantity as so, okay? and we know there are price takers, well, P1. We can define long run equilibrium like this. We've got marginal, or, well, average revenue, which is the marginal revenue, which is demand. Okay, so this is how we can determine long run equilibrium. You draw your cost curves, okay, so we've got marginal cost, we've got average cost. Okay, so in the long run, normal profits are being made. Where MC equals MR, it's at the lowest point on the average cost curve. Okay, that's long run equilibrium. Where AR is equal to AC, okay, that is long run equilibrium in perfect competition. Okay, so that's the key diagram. So it takes a price which in the long run leads to just normal profits being made because of the signaling effects of supernormal profits and subnormal profits. The key thing to take away from this, in terms of a comparison to other market structures, is to look at efficiency. 
Now we know that allocative efficiency, okay, allocative efficiency occurs where P equals MC. And we know that productive efficiency, okay, productive efficiency occurs at the lowest point on the average cost curve. So let's be the lowest, lowest point of average cost. So let's understand. Are these two points being met okay, all the time? Right. Well, allocative efficiency is always being met in the short run and the long run. Okay? The price line is also the marginal revenue. It's also the average revenue. So that's always going to be... Uh, that's always going to be um, level with MC because the firm is a profit maximizer. So MC equals MR also means P equals MC always happens. So allocated efficiency, yes, in the short run and in the long run. Okay? What about productive efficiency? Well, it definitely happens in the long run. The condition in the long run is that AC and AR must meet together, and that must happen at the lowest point on the average cost curve. Okay? And that happens to be profit maximizing too because that's where MC cuts the average cost curve. So product efficiency occurs in the long run. So in long run, yes, that happens. But it doesn't happen in the short run. Okay? In the short run, um, we're not necessarily producing at the lowest point on the average cost curve. So when it comes to efficiency, bear those two points in mind. Okay, so that's perfect competition, long run equilibrium. That's the key thing to take away from this section. See you next time. Thank you.